Okay, this will be the top six myths of IoT security. <clears throat> security has been the subtitle for all discussion about the Internet of Things, but a lot of that discussion has been based on some bad assumptions and misinterpretation. IoT can be secured, but just not in a lot of the ways that are being discussed. Here are six of the most common IoT security myths <clears throat> and the reality behind each them. Number one, light bulbs and industrial robots are secured the same way. IoT is really a super a superset of two very different technologies. The first part is what we think of most with consumer grade tech. Think light bulbs, TVs, and vacuum cleaners. The second part is operational technology or OT. Industrial robots, water turbines, elevators, and power plant rely equators. <clears throat> the essential difference is that OT is serviced and maintained by a dedicated team, usually closely backed by the vendor, whereas IoT, as consumer-grade tech, is not. <clears throat> this difference is significant to how they are secure and to the impact of being insecure. <clears throat> OT vendors, however, are typically less experienced than IT vendors in the ways of security. And this is a rough differentiation to so, cars for example although a consumer technology are in the ot a classification because of manufacturer involvement <clears throat> number two standards will secure iot this is common myth no <clears throat> one who hosted an ot or iot roundtable in the uae and the majority voted that they believed standard would fix the IoT security problem. <clears throat> this is certainly how things should work when viewed through the lens of safety. Safety standard works well in OT and IoT with established national standards, bodies, and labs. However, the reality is much different. <clears throat> there is hope, but no time soon will standards play a role of any impact. Standards play almost no role in IT security today. So our hope for them in IoT is aspirational. Number three, IoT vendors will start patching their devices. <clears throat> Product makers don't want insecure stuff. All IoT is patching challenge, but for different reason, the short description won't completely do the topic justice as this is very nuanced and complex discussions. <clears throat> OT teams do, do have a strong desire to patch. However, their software update cycles are often magnitudes lower than IT patching. <clears throat> Many OT devices will never see a patch, so the development and delivery of time-critical security patches is not part of their corporate DNA. Similarly, patch management is not traditionally part of the OT group, and DNA there is no turbine and water filtration system Monday, equivalent to Microsoft Patch Tuesday, nor are patch management tool open in use in OT environment. Much of the patching must be done locally and manually. <clears throat> IoT has different issues with patching, and most IoT devices were designed without any prospect of patching. Some IoT vendors do not keep a software team in-house, making patching problematic. A portion of IoT software is embedded in firmware, chips containing the flow plus that can require a replacement, meaning usually the whole device must be replaced. I, uh, the IoT component manufacturer told that it would add a 0.2 US dollar per chip for them to extensively test code and provide patches for security vulnerabilities, whereas the price of their nearest competitor is 0 0.01 US dollar per chip. And the manufacturer said the company had never had a buyer factor security into a purchasing decision. Number four, OT will make it all better. <clears throat> what is not a myth is that there is usually tension between enterprise IT department and the OT staff is responsible for the technology for the shop floor or production environment. <clears throat> the OT teams uh, certainly know their 
environment best. However, they come less equipped and experience that IT staff concerning modern threats and patch management techniques. <clears throat> OT teams usually learn on their familiar vendors. The manufacturers of the equipment, however, these vendors reflect the OT team in that they are slow to adapt to the new and incredibly hostile environment. <clears throat> Most of these vendors do not even have any kinds of bug bounty or vulnerability research interface. Think about it. OT and their vendors scape are required to go from 0 to 100 overnight from an air gap low threat world to an IP enabled one attack by nation attack or nation states and custom crafted malware. OT team do understand their environment the best so they are rightly skeptical of IT teams, which lead us to <clears throat> number five, early or uh, IT will make it all better. <clears throat> early on in IoT and OT security, it was assumed that the current IT techniques would be the fix. Just do what we do on the corporate network and everything will be all right. Unfortunately, it was immediately evident that things were in business as usual. Not everything is IP enabled. We cannot, we cannot risk connecting critical infrastructure to the corporate environment. The service level agreements for outage or downtime was several magnitudes less forgiving than IT. A strange protocol were involved and there was little if no coverage of these devices by vulnerability research. IT security has the triad of CIA as its foundation. <clears throat> confidentiality, integrity, and, and availability. And suddenly, a new leg was added to that safety because IT security and ops department were not equipped to perform their current task with that level of impact. <clears throat> IoT under IT is a bit better than OT, but it still requires flexing with which IT department may not be willing to undertake. Most studies predict that IoT devices are growing at magnitudes greater than IT devices. Most IT security products are not equipped to deal with the scale of IoT. Even if the teams are willing, for example, <clears throat> most security information in event products are already being challenged to handle the alert load, as well as firewall handling connection per second. <clears throat> IoT adds an approximate 10 times load in most enterprises with IT department again open and willing to take on the load of managing and securing what doesn't appear to be devices in the realm of responsibility. IT does not have the IoT security answer today, but that doesn't stop the threat landscape from using IoT as an attack surface in the interim. <clears throat> Number six, special IoT security products will fix it all. <clears throat> Early on, there were IoT specific security products that emerged. They tended to be either wireless focused, a good thing since so much of, of IoT connectivity is wireless based, or from the OT device manufacturers. However, <clears throat> the impact has, based limited, has been limited. OT manufacturers have been slow to bring effective products and the slow release of real dollars for OT and IoT has alienated vendors. The critical issue is that most IoT and OT security technologies are not linked to corporate IT <clears throat> security groups that are already organizationally decoupled, making the job of a security operation center <clears throat> responsible almost a manual task of calling co-workers to find out information. Okay, the top barriers to IoT and M2M adoption. So again, as what I have, as what we have here, we have the security and the barriers. So this will be the barriers for that. Then uh, again, as what we discussed, the challenges: low friction human inter interaction, unique device identification, device authenticity, device user association, and nature of the data. So to security versus comfort, risk versus reward. <clears throat> More challenges, as what I discussed earlier, this will be the more challenges. We have limited encryption capabilities, limited resources, 
limited clock synchronization, and firmware must be upgraded from time to time. <clears throat> IoT security design rules build security in it cannot be added later. Keep security mechanism simple. Use existing standards and obscurity does not provide security. <clears throat> Encrypt sensitive data at rest and in transit. Use will study cryptographic building blocks. Identify and access management must be part of the design and develop a realistic threat model. So <clears throat> secure web, mobile, and cloud interface. <clears throat> Do not allow default credentials, uh, so as what we discussed earlier. No? Assume device access internally and externally. Credentials should not be stored in plain text nor travel in encrypted channels. Protect against account enumeration and implement account lockout. Protect against XSS, CSRF, and SQLI. Implement I, an IAM, IRM systems. <clears throat> Identify creation, authentication, and authorization. So this will be the provisioning device identity. So from PKI, IDS system, and of course, for them to verify authenticity and register devices. <clears throat> so store uh, RNA token. So this will be registered me, authenticate uh, on device. Then this will be the verify identification of user, register user, authenticate user, and others. So device send data on behalf of users. So this will be an example again. User shares data, revokes token, <coughs> then the network devices. So ensure all necessary ports are open. Ensure services are not vulnerable to buffer, overflow, and push, uh, pushing <coughs> attacks. Ensure services are not vulnerable to those attacks. Transfer encryption, ensure data and credentials are encrypted while in transit. Use secure encrypted channels, be sure of that. Use good key lengths and good algorithms as what we discussed and protect against replay attacks. So privacy as part of the design, <clears throat> collect only the minimum necessary data for the functionality of the device. Especially here in the Philippines, we have the data privacy law. Ensure any sensitive data collected is properly protected with, encry with encry encryption and ensure the device properly protects and personal data. <clears throat> For the software and firmware, you must ensure your firmware does not contain hard-coded credentials or sensitive data. Use a secure channel to transmit that firmware during upgrades. Ins ins uh, ensure the update is assigned and verified before allowing the update. Do not send the public key with the firmware. Use a hash. <clears throat> Ensure your SVN or GIT repositories do not contain the private keys. <clears throat> For physical security, ensure physical access to your device is controlled. Accessible USB or SD ports can be a weakness. Can it, can it be easily dis disassembled to access that internal storage? If local data is sensitive, consider encrypting the data. And this will be the references. Thank you and good day, everyone.